Hey everybody, welcome to my new video series, How I Built the Craziest Gym Ever. This series will include several episodes carefully explaining each piece of equipment I've built in my home gym. I'll be sure to cover things like a list of materials used for each machine, a basic cut list, the dimensions of each machine, and general instruction on how to assemble each piece of equipment. I'll also be adding what tools were used, how much time and cost, as well as discussing future gym equipment projects. If you enjoy this video and want to support future content, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below. So without further delay, let's get to this episode's project. In this episode, I will be going over the general step-by-step -step process it takes to build this power rack. I've used this power rack now for almost 18 months, and so far, I love the results. It continuously stands up to my heaviest lifts and allows me to continue making progress in any strength goal I choose. Best of all, it only costs a fraction of the price to build compared to some of the top-of-the-line fitness equipment, if you're willing to put in the work. Here are the steps it takes to make this piece of equipment. Step one is to simply buy all the necessary material to build your power rack. Let's start with the wooden materials first. You will need a total of 38 8 foot 2 by 6s, two 8 foot 2 by 4s, and for the optional pegboard, you will need one 8 foot 2 by 10, one 4 foot by 4 foot piece of plywood, and one one and a half inch by 48 inch wooden dowel. For the hardware, you will need four boxes of four inch wood screws, three boxes of two and a half inch wood screws, two one inch by 60 inch piping plus two caps, two six inch by one inch pipe plus cap, two one inch floor flanges, two heavy duty wall hooks, and Elmer's wood glue. For the J-hooks, you will need two 6 inch by 1 inch pipe plus cap, two 1 inch couplings, two 1 inch adapter pipe, and two 1 inch floor flanges. And last, for the pull-up bar, you will need one 3 quarter inch by 39 inch pipe and two 3 quarter inch flanges. Step two involves measuring and cutting all the wood materials to the appropriate lengths. First, you must decide how tall you would like your power rack. For this example, I decided to keep my power rack at eight feet tall given my garage had plenty of ceiling space. Before we start the cut list, let's go over all the necessary tools you will need to complete this job. First, you will need a saw of some kind to make your cuts. A miter saw and a circular saw were my weapons of choice. Next you will need a quality power drill, a drill press, a hammer, measuring tape, electric sander, and sandpaper. Now for the cut list. First, separate 16 of the 38 2x6 boards because they have already been pre-cut to exactly 8 feet. Next, cut 6 2x6s at 70 and 1 half inches, 5 2x6s at 50 inches, six two by sixes at 61 inches, nine two by sixes at 45 and one half inches, two two by sixes at 40 inches, two two by sixes at 25 inches, 12 two by sixes at 12 inches, four two by sixes at 21 inches, two two by fours at 21 inches, two two by fours at 61 inches, and two two by fours at 16 inches. For the pegboard, Cut the 2 by 10 at exactly 48 inches and cut two pieces of plywood measuring 10 inches by 48 inches. Step three, sand each board. After you're finished cutting all the wood to the appropriate lengths, be sure to carefully sand the surface and any rough edges of each board thoroughly. Step four, measure and drill. Once you're finished sanding the cut list, it's now time to measure, mark, and drill each hole in your power rack. 
First, grab the 12 8 foot 2x6 boards from your cut list and lay them down to be measured and marked. For this example, I marked each hole at exactly 5.5 inches, measuring from the exact center of each hole. For this power rack, I chose to start marking the holes at exactly 22.5 inches from the bottom, and continued marking each hole at 5.5 inches until I reached a total of 11 holes. I chose to pace each hole where I did because I did not want to compromise the integrity of the wood any more than I had to. But if I were to repeat this process, I would probably choose to pace each hole closer to 4.5 inches. This would ultimately allow more options when choosing where to set the safety bars. Once you're finished measuring every mark, it's time to drill each hole using a 1.5 inch spade bit or saw bit. I would highly recommend using a drill press for this, so that each hole you drill is clean and true. Once you finish drilling the first board, be sure to then use this same board to retrace every hole onto the remaining 11 boards. This power rack has a total of 132 holes that will need to be thoroughly drilled, not including the pegboard, which will be addressed later. Step 5. Assemble all frame posts. As we view the power rack from the side angle, you can see all 6 frame posts. Post 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all constructed with the previously drilled 8 foot 2x6 boards and are stacked together in such a way that it makes a triple ply beam. Posts 5 and 6 are constructed of the remaining 8 foot 2x6 boards that were not drilled and are simply two boards stacked together to help support the back of the power rack. Step 6. Glue and secure each frame post. Now it's time to finish each frame post by gluing and securing the boards together with using the appropriate screws. For the four triple ply frame posts, be sure to apply plenty of wood glue on both sides of the middle board. Next, restack and align the boards so that all the holes and edges match up correctly. Using the 3 8 drill bit, pre-drill and secure the boards together using the 4 inch wood screws. Be sure to place two screws side by side every 24 inches. Then flip the post over and repeat the process. Make sure to stagger the screws on both sides accordingly. For the two remaining frame posts in the back of the power rack, simply apply wood glue and join the two 8 foot 2 by 6 boards with 2 and a half inch wood screws and place the screws side by side every 24 inches. Step 7. Build wall frame. Once you have completed all six frame posts successfully, it is now time to start framing your power rack. If you study the schematics of this power rack, you will notice it's essentially two heavy duty wall frames connected together by some 2x6 boards and a pull up bar. Begin building your two wall frames one side at a time. Start by lying the three wall posts on the ground and spacing them out so the distance between the front of post 1 and the back of post 3 are exactly 70 and 1 half inches. Position post 2 at 50 inches from the front of post 1, which should make the distance between the back of post 3 and the front of post 2 exactly 25 inches. Once all the posts are aligned properly, connect them together at the top and bottom with two of the pre-cut 70 and 1 half inch boards. Be sure to use 4 inch wood screws. Next, connect another 70 and 1 half inch board at the top of the wall frame seen here. When this is done, repeat the process to complete the second wall frame. Step 8. Connect both wall frames. The next step is to connect both wall frames using the 5 50 inch 2x6 boards from your cut list. Start with the back of the power rack and connect the first board here so that the board is flush with the top of the power rack. Be sure to use 4 inch wood screws. The second board, seen here, is connected at the bottom, positioned 4 inches above the ground. Board 3 is connected to the back of the middle wall post positioned 12 inches above the ground. Last, boards 4 and 5 are connected to the front of the power rack as shown. Step 9. Connect support brackets. Now it's time to connect the necessary support brackets to make the power rack sturdy. Start by taking all the 12 inch 2x6 boards in your cut list and install a 45 degree angle on each end of the board so that they align correctly. When all the angles are cut, 
Begin installing the support brackets in the back of the power rack, both up top and on the bottom. Pre-drill four holes and install each bracket using two and a half inch screws. Next, install the larger upper bracket shown here, using the four 21 inch 2x6 boards in your cutlass. You will first need to cut the edges to 45 degrees. Before you install the last four bottom brackets, you must first build the platform to your power rack. Step 10. Build Platform For this platform, you will need to first lay the foundation using the 45 and 1 half inch 2x6 boards from the cutlass. Lay the boards down in between the front of the power rack until the rack floor is covered. This should take 7 boards. The remaining two boards will be placed right outside the power rack frame, adjacent with the other boards. For the top of the platform, you'll be using six 2x6 and two 2x4 boards, all measuring 61 inches. Stack the boards up horizontally across the front of the power rack on top of the previous boards. Next, pre-drill and secure the boards using 2.5 inch wood screws. Install the two 42 and 1 half inch 2x6 boards from the cut list at the end of the platform as shown here. When that is done, install the two 25 inch 2x6 boards from the cut list here. Be sure to do this on both sides of the power rack. When that's finished, you can now install the remaining 12 inch bottom brackets as well as the two 2x4 brackets seen here. This bracket also serves as a dual purpose to keep my bench locked into position. Step 11. Install Hardware Probably the most important element to this piece of equipment is the utilizing and functioning ability of the safety bars. Take both 60 inch by 1 inch pipes and screw on the 1 inch cap to the threaded end of the pipe. It's imperative that both safety bars fit and function exactly how they are intended. Make sure they are as level as possible and can smoothly glide in and out of the power rack. Now, take both heavy duty wall hooks and install them on the outside bottom of the power rack, 12 inches from the edge of the platform using 2.5 inch switch screws. After that, you can either use two additional wall hooks or a 6 inch pipe and flange to install the upper band hooks onto the power rack. Make sure the upper and lower hooks are in alignment. These are both for adding accommodating resistance to the barbell through resistance bands. Next will be to install the pull-up bar at the top front of the power rack. Grab the 39.5 inch by 3 quarter inch pipe and screw a 3 quarter inch flange on both sides of the pipe. Then secure both ends of the pipe 12 inches down from the top of the power rack using four 2.5 inch wood screws. For the J hooks, Grab the two 6 inch by 1 inch pipes and screw a 1 inch cap on one end then screw a 1 inch coupling on the other. Screw the 1 inch adapter pipe into the coupling and last screw on the 1 inch flange at the end of the adapter pipe. To install the J cup simply unscrew the cap, slide the 6 inch pipe into the power rack until it's flush against the coupling then screw the cap back on the other side as shown. Step 12. Go over the finishing touches. Now that your power rack is complete, I suggest going over it one more time with an electric sander and tightening and adding screws where necessary. Last but not least, I recommend placing three or four strips of double-sided grip tape to both ends of the platform. Finally, move the power rack into its designated position. As you can see, the rack can be moved by one person but it is rather awkward without an extra hand. Now for the cost. Although the price of materials for this machine might vary slightly, the overall estimated cost is under $200 for the wood and under $70 for the hardware, making the total estimate cost around $260 to buy everything brand new. This concludes episode one of how I built the craziest gym ever. Be sure to follow along as I continue to analyze and examine each additional piece of equipment in my gym.